And here uh, with us today inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room, we've been talking about docking vehicles. We have another one soon to launch first before it docks, and that vehicle is the SpaceX Dragon. It is the first commercial space flight to ever to uh, launch to the International Space Station. With it is carrying some special cargo, and that is some science. We love science. So here to talk with us today is Camille Eileen. She is the uh, Space Station Assistant Program Scientist. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Amico, for having me. Great. Well, first, before we get into the science that's going up to the station and the science that's coming down, first, just tell me a little about yourself. How did you get into this field? How did you come to NASA? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, I was, I always had an interest in space and airplanes ever since I was a child. So um, when I decided to study engineering automatically, uh, you know, aerospace engineering came to mind. So I have several degrees in aerospace engineering, a bachelor's degree from Howard University, um, and a couple master's degrees in mechanical and aerospace engineering. Um, and I've been at NASA for about 10 years. Um, I've spent also six, six or seven years at Department of Defense working on ballistic missile engineering. Okay, great. So when you first came to NASA, did you immediately start in the science, the station science program? No, when I or? first came to NASA, actually I started at Kennedy Space Center okay. year, over a decade ago doing space lab processing for this back in the day um, for the space shuttle. Um, then I've worked at headquarters uh, during the early days of exploration. Um, and then I came to jo Johnson Space Center six years ago, where I served as the Orion crew module test and uh, verification manager. And now I'm in the ISS program science office. Great, welcome. Well, we're very, very glad to have you here. Thank you. So um, let's go ahead and talk about that SpaceX Dragon. So there's something special about it, and, and that is that it's, um, not just that it's the first commercial cargo you know, ship to go up, but the, the thing that's special about it is that it is a reusable vehicle. That's right. So it can bring stuff like science up, mm -hmm. and it can bring stuff like science back, mm -hmm. and that's very important. And can you explain to us what that's going to do as far as capability? Yes, the research community is very, very excited about this capability. As you said, we haven't had this capability, at least a dong mass, we call dong mass capability, since the space shuttle. So b the um, SpaceX Dragon being able to demonstrate that it could return um, hardware and samples is an exciting thing for the researchers. And in addition, it has a cold storage capability that's going to be demonstrated, and that's going to be able to preserve samples that need refrigeration, and that's something we haven't had. Okay, since great. Space so shuttle. that's kind of like those biological samples that exactly. you hear about. They're taking the blood and urine samples and exactly. all that sort of stuff. I know we have the energy experiment, and they've been taking those samples, you know, recently, and and so those would come down on that as well, exactly. and they, they would be preserved. So that's yes. good. Um, so let's talk about some science that's going up. This is really exciting because what I understand we have some students that are sending, and this is from fifth grade to college mm -hmm. age. So students, they are sending like 15, I think, different participants are actually sending their science experiments up to the space station. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little about that program? And yes. How we the, uh, the students designed 15 experiments that would be going up on the SpaceX Dragon. Um, and these, uh, as you said, range from fifth graders to college uh, level students, which is very exciting, um, designing these kind of experiments. Sure. Um, they were selected from almost 800 proposals that came from around the United States. Um, and so it's a part of the NanoRax um, module uh, that will be flying up um, to the space station, and that's a multi-purpose research facility that's on board the space station that's going to house these experiments. And the experiments range from I looking at the effect. I actually have a list here. We can yes. look at some of these because they're very interesting. And very I guess you interesting. would get a wide range from fifth grade to college, mm -hmm. but they all sound very, um, just very intriguing. So we have fermentation of grape juice and microgravity. Mm -hmm. I might be interested in that one. <laughs> <laughs> there is composting and microgravity. Radiation effects on worms, DNA study of E. coli, e. coli bacteria. vitamin C effects on bone density, using cacti to purify water, mm -hmm. which would be very essential aboard the International Space Station. That's correct. Very interesting um, stuff here. So, And when you think of the context of students designing these kind of experiments, it's really exciting, and it helps motivate them and inspire them in their studies of science, math, technology, and engineering. I, so a unique, unique opportunity. Sure, I can't even imagine any better motivation. Exactly. I mean, for me, if, you know, if I were a student and I had my science was actually going up aboard the International Space Station, Definitely. that's 
far better than you know my little science project that I had up in that you know you know room of that day. Mm -hmm. So speaking of those science projects and stuff, we we have um, so we are going to be bringing back um, some science and some hardware. And so let's talk about one of them. I know I've I've actually seen a lot of this taking place um, on the last expedition and this expe expedition as well. It's known as shear and it has to do with the polymer fluids, the rotation. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to me about that? Yes. SHEAR stands for SHEAR History Extensional Rheology Experiment. It's a mouthful. But really, it looks at the behavior of liquid polymers in the microgravity ex environment when they are subjected to stressing. So they, they're s rotationally stressed. And so um, researchers are really interested in how that whole process and how the behavior of those polymers act in that environment and that really helps them with designing fabrication and repair processes of using in situ materials on board uh, the space station and does it have applications here on earth it does um, in helping to do manufacturing processes of things like liquid adhesives great thanks well there really is some connection space to Earth, and, and that's um, very important for us. I, I, there's another one that's coming down, and this one I am just I am just completely enthralled by it. I mean, I ju I'm just very intrigued by it, and it's the plant signaling. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little about it, because it's talking about how plants grow and how we can basically re-engineer mm -hmm. a plant's basic genetic yes. on how it grows. Yes. We can tell it how we want it to grow, mm -hmm. and that's just amazing. We're, we're redesigning evolution almost. Mm -hmm. so and tell we me do that on the ground, actually, but um, in the microgravity uh, environment, researchers are looking at the molecular mechanisms that plants use to respond to the changes in the environment. Sure. And as you said, that helps them design plants or really select plants that would withstand long-duration spaceflight and the microgravity e environment. Yeah, and so when I'm thinking about about those science fair projects that we had back in the day. Um, the one I always remember because everyone did it, the one that they did it the night before, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> those plants with the <laughs> that with the light, you know, cut it because they wanted to see which way the, the plants grew toward exactly. the light or that sort of thing. But so with the environment in space, it's not necessarily looking at light. It's looking at yeah. other things like yeah, so what we don't understand how plants grow on the ground, or we kind of take it for granted, is that the roots, because of gravity, grow down. So that's the sensing to go down in the downward vector, right. and then the the leaves go up towards the light. In microgravity, of course, we don't have we don't have a down. The, the gravity. <laughs> um, so you know, researchers are looking at different stimulus um, that would allow the plants to grow. And of course, plants are a great fruit source for long duration space flights. So it's, it's a really critical uh, investigation. Sure, very important. And so um, the material science research rack, I understand that that is a component that will be coming down along with these science experiments? Yes, that is one. Um, the mis material science research rack is a facility that facilitates al aluminum, um, metal processing mm -hmm. on board the space station. And what they look at is melting it and then solidifying it. So those material samples are actually coming down. And researchers are excited to look at the recrystallization patterns that happen as, an if, as an, a result of microgravity. Yeah, and so that's some of the hardware and samples that will be coming back on sure. the Dragon capsule. And what that is looking at is also, or the benefits of that particular research is to improve, you know, to have improvements on alloy materials here on Earth. Exactly. Alloy m materials being things like brass or silver. Exactly. So that's very, it's fascinating. It's very just amazing. I'm always amazed, you know, sometimes you just see them out there, they're, you know, kind of floating around, but they actually are doing work that is beneficial to us, not only to get us further into space, but also back here on yes, Earth. Yes, that has an impact on life on Earth. Sure. Yeah. And any other um, yes, um, there are some other hardware components coming back from the combustion integrated rack, okay. which is a res research facility that facilitates combustion research. We also have some double coal bags coming back. Um, so it's it, it's a very exciting time for researchers so that they can get their research back on the ground and, and continue the analysis of all these investigations. Great. Well, thank you so much for all the information. This is very exciting news. We are looking forward 
to that SpaceX launch, and hopefully it'll it'll get up there, it'll dock, and then it'll return all that good stuff back to us and um, here on Earth. And you guys will have lots to look into and yes. help improve our world here on Earth. Yes. Um, again, thank you so much for coming thank out. Thank you for having me.